Hello and welcome to SOC eTech. In today's video, I will talk about DSLR lenses. This course is for beginners who are just diving into DSLR photography, so we are going to cover the basics in a very meaningful way for beginners. Also, see the description below for my full playlist of DSLR photography tips, tricks, and tutorials. I will be adding more courses occasionally, so subscribe and stay tuned by keeping an eye on the photography playlist. So in this video, I'm going to show you three things. I'm going to show you how to unmount and mount a lens and how to protect your camera's sensor. I'm also going to show you different types of lenses. And finally, I'm going to show you what all the numbers mean on a camera lens. So if you look at a camera lens, it is riddled with numbers. You need to know what all those numbers are if you are going to be a DSLR photographer. All right, so here's my DSLR camera, and as you can see, it has a mounted lens protected by a lens cap right now, which is something you always should do. So how do you unmount this lens? You press that button, okay, and then twist the lens. So press the button with your thumb and twist the lens just to open it. All righty, and then as you do this, the camera sensor is exposed. That is something you want to cover up with your sensor cap that comes with all the cameras. Okay, so do not let your camera just sit around with the sensor exposed. And when you're ready to remount the lens, simply remove the cap. Again, twist the cap just like you twisted the uh, lens, but you do not need to press the button. And then grab the lens, and all lenses have a white or a red dot on them, just like that. Align it with the white dot on the camera right there. Okay, so make sure they're aligned put it in, twist it clockwise until it snaps in place, you will hear a small click and you're good to go. All right, so let's uh, move on to the types of lenses. So there's two types of main lenses. One of them is called a prime lens and the other one is called a zoom lens. A prime lens comes with a fixed focal length and a zoom lens comes with a variable focal length so that you can change your angle of view. In more basic terms, you can change the zoom factor, okay? So prime lens has a fixed focal length and a zoom lens allows you to zoom in by changing the focal length. And let me um, show you how to identify a prime lens and a, and a zoom lens just by looking at the lenses. And of course you do that simply by looking at the focal length value that is printed on all lenses, okay? So the lens on the left is a 40 millimeter lens and this is a prime lens because that's the only range that is given to you now the other one is a 52 to 50 millimeter focal length so that means that is in fact a zoom lens that means you can change the focal length and you can bring subjects closer actually you don't really bring them closer you actually change your angle of view but it gives you the zooming effect so here's a picture I took at 35 millimeters focal length using a zoom lens attached to my camera. And then I retook the picture at 55 millimeters and this is what it looks like. So you can see the zooming effect that happens when you change the focal length from a lower number to a higher number. Okay, so just by looking at the lens and looking at, at its uh, focal length, you can tell whether it is a prime lens or a zoom lens it's a prime lens if you only see a single number like 40 millimeters and it's a zoom lens if you see two numbers such as 18 to 55 millimeters or 50 to 250 millimeters and stuff like that so let's take a look at all the other numbers that are printed on a lens so we can learn more about any given lens and what it does the next number I'm going to take a look at is called the minimum focus distance. The minimum focus distance is the shortest distance at which a lens can focus on a subject. So that means the lens will simply not focus at distances shorter than the minimum focus distance. And I'm going to demonstrate this in a second. But first, let's see where to find this number on the lens itself. Now all lenses will have this number printed somewhere on the lens as you can see in the example. The little 40 millimeter prime lens has a minimum focus distance of 0 0.3 meters, which is 11.8 inches. The 50 millimeter prime lens has a minimum focus distance 
of 0 0.45 meters, which is 17.7 .7 inches, whereas the 50 to 250 millimeter zoom lens has a minimum focus distance of 0 0.85 meters, which is 33.5 inches. All right, so let's uh, do a quick demonstration. The lens that is currently attached to my DSLR is a 18 to 55 millimeter zoom lens and it has a minimum focus distance of 0 0.25 meters which is approximately uh, 9.8 inches. Now to measure the minimum focus distance you have to take the distance between the focal plane mark which is found on all cameras to the subject. So that's the focal plane mark right there and if you take the distance from that mark to the subject you will be able to focus no problem in this scenario since the distance is equal to or larger than minimum focus distance. Now if you move the subject even a tiny bit closer I will lose focus in this scenario and in this scenario. So we looked at the minimum focus distance the next thing I want to look at is your f-stop number which is the measurement of your aperture. Now aperture is simply the opening in your lens that lets the light into the sensor of your camera. Now here's a picture of a wide open aperture on a Canon lens. Now in this picture the aperture is wide open but you can actually change the aperture to not open so wide in case you don't need all that light. If you suck in too much light your picture can be overly bright. So these are the settings you have to tweak to make sure that you have the right brightness, the right exposure on your picture. Now since this is a beginner's tutorial I will not go into the details but just remember this the lower the f stop number the wider the opening is which means more light gets in. On the flip side the higher the f-stop number the smaller the opening is which means less light gets in. So going back over to our lenses let's get an aperture reading on each one of these guys. The 40 millimeter prime lens on the left has a maximum aperture of f2.8. Now there is a maximum aperture and there's a minimum aperture usually the manufacturers print the maximum possible aperture on their lenses which in the case of this lens is f2.8. The next lens over is a 50 millimeter prime with a maximum aperture of f1.8 which means this guy can suck in a lot of light which is great for low light photography where you need as much light sucked in as possible to get a decent well lit photo. Now the final lens on the far right is a zoom lens with a focal range of 55 to 50 and the aperture is denoted a little differently. A zoom lens most of the time but not always has a maximum aperture at its lowest focal length and a maximum aperture at its highest focal length. And throughout the zoom range of 55 to 250 the aperture will be variable between f4 and f5.6 so the more you zoom the smaller the aperture opening gets. And now I want to show you how different aperture values actually look in real life so you get you get a better grip on what's going on. So right now the aperture is wide open at f1.8. So let me increase the f-stop number and narrow down the opening and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to use the dial on my camera to go to f5.6 and if I press the preview button that is what the aperture looks like that is the size of the opening as I'm taking a picture. You see how that is a little smaller than the wide open aperture? So let me uh, show you one more let me increase the f-stop number even higher so the opening is even smaller. Let's preview that. Now, As you can see the opening has gotten much slower I am around at f11 at this point. All right, so that's it for the aperture. Let's move on to the next value that is printed on the lens. All right, so the next value that you want to be aware of on the lens is the lens diameter. The only reason you want to know this is if you buy a lens cap, a lens mount, or a lens filter, you just have to make sure that the diameter on those guys actually equals the diameter of the lens itself so they can fit in snugly. So as you can see the big lens in the middle has a lens hood attached to it and it reads 58 millimeters right on the top. Okay, So the 58 millimeters of the lens hood matches the lens's diameter 
So that's just what you got to watch out for. All right, so the final two things I'm going to go over is the image stabilization system and the autofocus manual focus button. So image stabilization allows you to take pictures, uh, handheld pictures, without using a tripod, without getting motion blur. In most cases, it is very useful. Sometimes if your hands are shaking too much, you are going to get the motion blur anyway. In those situations, you will need a tripod. So this is a very simple concept. If you turn it off, it doesn't work. And with a tripod, you don't really need it. But when you have it turned on, if you're uh, running around and taking shots uh, uh, in your hand, then you want to make sure this is turned on. Not all cameras or lenses have this. For example, this lens here, it does not have it. The only thing it has is the auto focus and manual focus toggle. So this lens does not have image stabilization. But anyway, let's go back to autofocus now. So if you have autofocus turned on, all you do is you point and you shoot. So if you point at something and you press down the shutter button, your camera focuses and then you press it all the way, it takes the picture. If you have it set up on manual focus, then you have to use a f what is called a focus ring to focus manually on anything that you please. This is very useful when um, you can get an accurate focus using autofocus. Autofocus again is a computer okay so manual focus you get full control over the focus and using the ring you can manual focus on anything you please. Alright so with manual focus turned on I am rotating the ring to focus on that bag over there but as you can see in the screen I can go in and out of focus completely manually okay so right now I am out of focus but if I twist the ring a little bit it becomes comes into focus all right so we learned a lot today so just to give you a summary of what you learned today you learned about the focal length the minimum focusing distance aperture the autofocus manual focus the manual focus ring image stabilization and the two types of lenses the prime lenses and the zoom lenses all right, so that brings us to the end of this video. See the description below for my full playlist of DSLR photography tips, tricks, and tutorials. I will be adding more courses occasionally, so subscribe and stay tuned by keeping an eye on the photography playlist.